In this video, we're going to be discussing why you should be fusing all the balancing wires that connect from your battery to your battery management system, your watch more 5 in this case here. You must have a fuse. These are 24 gauge wires we're using here. They actually, you know, rated for 2 amps, but they can carry in 32 milliseconds 348 amps, okay? You might reach to the current instantly. So this can act as a fuse if you use a thin wire. Two wires, if they're short, they're all bunched up together often. So if you use a thick wire, you might never blow the wire instantly. So if the wires in the middle start melting, but they don't blow. So what's going to happen? They're going to melt the neighbor's uh, wire's insulation. And then it's just going to cause a massive problem. All these wires are going to melt together and short together. And then you're going to have a massive short circuit between all the series here. And it's just a disaster. So you don't want that. So you actually want to be fusing from the energy source. Okay, so as close as possible from the energy source. So here we got this, uh, this is a very common uh, glass fuse uh, holder, right? So the, you put the glass fuse inside there. Choo -choo. It's actually serviceable, okay? Very easy to use. That's the glass fuse we're talking about. Very popular. You can find this thing anywhere, right? This is rated for 3 amps. Uh, you can use lower. The BMS is actually not balancing at 3 amps. It's actually lower current. So that's the fuse we have here. So it's just very standard size. You can find anywhere. Okay, um, so, and this is what we pre-wired here, okay? So this is the shortest path we could do with this uh, fuse. They're actually bulky, but they are, you know, easy to demonstrate to people and unplug and plug things. So it's very handy for demonstrations. We try to keep as short as possible here for an energy source, okay? So right here, if you could do it even shorter, we'll do it, okay? But then you still have, need to have some space here to actually replace the fuse. And here you notice the so the contact that is inside here, there's actually a brass contact inside. So we made it in a way that you cannot accidentally touch neighbor cells. Okay, so there is a little play here, but you cannot short the neighbor cells here. Look, you cannot go. Okay, so all these things are taken in consideration. Um, another thing that we'll be showing here, uh, the buzz bars. We actually cover as much as we could, okay, so these still need to be naked here, exposed, so, you know, to make the contact between cells, but all this metal area here, we're actually covering with heat shrink, okay? So, try to cover as much metal possible, you should be considering like a clear plastic cover or something here, some people might have a child play with screwdriver, cha -cha -cha -cha. or you might drop something over the battery, you might short, okay? So, you try to protect, consider all these things, when you're building a battery. This is your Watch Move 5, okay? So when you receive this, you're gonna see this uh, read instructions before you use. So do not plug the plugs here and start wiring straight to the Watch Move, okay? So this is a, any BMS, not talk about this one, any BMS is a recipe for disaster, okay? So do not do it. So this is why we have Tesmon, which is this little handy device here. This is a little device to check the voltage, if they're incrementing correctly here, okay? From the lowest voltage side of the pack, the negative, increasing two, two, series one, series two, series three, all the way to the highest voltage. It's almost everything proof. <laughs> so if you plug the ones in a different order here, it's not gonna like, and it's not gonna give you pass message. So, so the plugs that you're gonna need for this BMS, they're actually here, okay? So you do all the wiring here, Okay, so once you get the message you pass, and then you unplug it in here, plug to your watch mode 5. So this is a battery pack. This is a battery that it's very visual, so you can actually see everything. It's all like a bolted together, so there's no soldering, crimping, nothing time consuming here. Okay, so everything is just all you need is just a Phillips screwdriver here. Very simple. You're just gonna screw all these buzz bars to the batteries and start from the negative and it goes down and up and down and up and down and up and goes all the way back and comes back here and this is the most positive cell in the pack we're gonna start connecting these things together connecting the bus bars to the battery pack okay so this is gonna be the most negative cell in the pack this is the negative of the whole battery pack and this is the positive of the whole battery pack Okay, so the voltage is actually gonna go like this, choom, choom, and linking, 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 and going all the way, linking, connect the cells, 
come back to do, 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 all the way, buzz, 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 and then ends here in this positive, okay? So we, the first link is actually connecting this cell to this cell, but we're connecting from the bottom here, okay? The positive links to the negative of the next one, and then we're gonna put another buzz bar here, and then another buzz bar here, and then another buzz bar here on top, another buzz bar, and then that's how it goes. So let's just start with the very first link here in the bottom. Always be very careful, do not let things touch sideways. Always hold, as you're installing the bus bar on the battery, do not let it go off your hands, okay? Always hold until it's firmly attached to the battery, so you do not touch the neighbor cells, okay? So you notice here that I actually have the fuse, okay? So in the positive terminal. So this is my positive, black is my negative. I'm actually gonna fuse on the positive, okay? Every positive in the battery, okay? I'm gonna go to the next one. These guys here, okay? Now we're gonna be linking this side of the pack with the other side of the pack. So it's actually happening in the bottom here, right? So you see, so it's actually connecting these cells here. As you noticed, I was always ho carefully holding the bus bars as I was bolting them up. Because look, things can get out of your control when you're bolting, tightening, and then this thing might touch the neighbor cell. In here, let's just measure the voltage we're getting at the moment. So this is about 40 volts. About 40 volts difference. This will be hundreds, if not thousand amps here, okay? Uh, a big spark, like an arc welding, okay? So <laughs> you gotta be always very, very, very careful. Always hold it, okay? Always keep your fingers there. And some people might get electric shock here, okay? I normally don't feel anything up to 55 volts, I'd say. But some people, they start feeling electric shock from 36 volts, okay? So it all depends on your, your hands, the moisture in your hands, the oils in your hands. Um, yeah, like it, actually the terminals as well, like it, it, it there's like many factors. Some people do feel more tingly in, in fingers than others, okay? So just be careful. You can wear gloves, rubber gloves, okay? So here we go. So just measuring the whole pack voltage here, just confirming. So this is the negative of the pack, this is the positive of the pack. Here we got 46 volts, okay? Cool. We've got the battery pack here, ready to be connected fuse so we can start actually doing the wiring loan. So you see how easy it is uh, to do now. So all we have to do is just connect here and bring the wire, chop it nicely one by one. We're actually installing here to your test mode. Right, so I actually start wiring the very first half of the pack here, the low voltage side of the pack. Do, 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 see? So now the fuse, everything looks nice and neat, organized. Got zip ties here, everything looks, it looks decent. All the fuse, you still have room here to remove them, replace the fuse if in case of any, anything goes wrong. Hopefully you never have to touch this fuse ever, ever again. And here, that's the other side here, we're gonna be showing how to wire in this video. We are actually using any type of plastic here, anything you could use really. In this case here, we're only illustrating, and it's just, this is not a fire retardant by any means. This is just a, any plastic. So we actually just showing how to prevent anything from happening in the first place, okay? Avoid using big watches like this because it could be a potential disaster here. This watch could probably handle maybe 1200 amps, 1200 amps shorting this thing right here, okay? So it's ridiculous. Avoid using anything like that. Let's go for action and start wiring up everything here on the high voltage side. If you're an electrician, you'll be very familiar with these guys. So you see these plastic things terminating the wires? So they're actually called ferrules. But it's basically, it does two things. So it actually uh, insulates with plastic here, so wires cannot cross and touch each other. 
and it actually protects the wire from breaking. So you see, it's actually a metal tubing that insert in a, in a very delicate wires like this. They actually have an even bigger size for this, so it's very common in electrical installations. So you see, very thin strands. After crimping, they look like that, more like a solid metal bit. So you don't crush and cut the very thin wires. The screw terminals, you can actually really go really hard here, and yeah, you, it might be too rough and cut the cable. So this is actually safer doing this way okay all right i'm going to be showing how to do this thing just finished installing this plastic cable management thing we made everything neat, no balancing wires over the battery terminals. So this is the low voltage side of the pack, and this is the high voltage side of the pack on this side. It's very obvious when you see your watch mount. So you have like a low battery voltage, high battery voltage, okay? So on this side, it starts with like zero, and then the next one, the first one is actually like a three volts, which is number one, and then goes six volts, nine volts, and then goes increasing, 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 increasing all the way to 14, 15, depending on cell configuration and battery chemistry, you're gonna be going between 50 to 60 volts, okay? Like a 54 point something or 58 point something volts. So now we're actually wiring the higher voltage inside the pack because the lower voltage is already made here. And then we're gonna start actually with number eight, okay? So the first one of the higher voltage is number eight, okay? So this is number eight. And then there's buzz bar here. And then the, the next one here is number nine, here in the bottom. This guy here, red, buzz bar. And then number 10 up here. And then buzz bar again, and down. And this is the next one in line. And then the next one, and then the next one. And then the last one, which is 14, okay? So first, I'm just gonna be wiring just with a long wire because I'm gonna be trimming everything in the end. Okay, so I'm just gonna be, just to have an idea of the position. So, yep, yeah, no fuse here, just a holder with no fuse, okay. And at the moment, all I want here, it's not making a, connect, a final connection, is just get the wiring position here, okay? So you don't get things mixed up, okay? So you see here, I'm not stripping the wire yet. Just gonna put in place, so I know this one's number eight. Okay, put it here, and then the next one, number nine. Number 10. Number 13. So you see here, this is number 13. I'm gonna show you here, number 13. And now we have to actually make a jump up between 13 and 14. 14 cells in series. The BMS can actually take up to 15 cells in series, which you see here, number 15, okay? So you see here in the back of the watch mall, you have some instructions here. So like for 14S, 14 cells, you actually have to do a jump of one. Jump of one is this guy, JC1, okay? He's skipping the number 14 and plugging the positive to the number 15. So for different configurations, 13 cells in series, 12, 11, you follow all these ones here, okay? This is obviously the positive, the red one here. So we're gonna go here. And then I'm gonna be doing the jump lead when I'm actually finishing trimming this, okay? So now it's time to actually make everything looks nice and neat like this guy here, right? So now that everything is quite safe here inside the connector, so we're actually gonna start putting the fuse inside all the fuse holders here so we actually get the right sizing like for the cable length here, okay? So 
So now we have everything nicely organized on both sides. You see here. And all I need to do here now is actually trim all this excess wiring here. So we connect this one here. So we try to make the same length. Okay, so we're gonna pull the pack here and try to kind of follow the same size in here, okay? So I'm gonna be putting some zip ties here. Right, so now we're gonna actually start trimming all this excess wiring here, because some cells are further, some cells are quite close here, so there's some wire left here, okay? Um, so I'm gonna make everything nice, like I did in this one here, okay? So what I'm doing, I'm gonna locate the shortest one, which is the red one. That's actually the size that I want to end up with, okay? So I want quite long like this. And so I'm gonna be removing the red one here, okay? Oops. Removing. Okay. I'm going to be stripping the wire here using this. And see? Quite thin strands. And then I'm going to use the, right, uh, the red ferrule. I'm going to be using the red ferrule. The little tubing here. See if I can zoom in the camera here. See if you can see. Ta-da. Let's see if you can zoom here in the camera so you can see. All right. Ta -da. So now I'm going to go and crank it. Put it here. Ta -da. Nice and crushed. Okay. So I know I need to trim a little bit because this is quite deep. So I just make it a little bit shorter. And then insert right here and screw it back. I'm going to be repeating the same process to all these ones here, okay? We're following this length here. So for this, number 13. Yeah, look, it's really messy. So that's the number 13 here. Look. All right. So I'm going to be disconnecting here, number 13, because it's really spaghetti. <laughs> And just following the red one. I normally grab with my hands like this. Just follow. So they're all kind of the same length here. And then I go hold here and look from the top. And then I just imagine where I'm going to cut. All right. So I need to cut the insulation from my finger. Okay. So what you can do is you go here, cut the wire here and strip the insulation from the place you want, okay, which is here. All right, so I'm gonna put another ferrule here and do the same thing, okay. And then I go cut the excess because I want a nice and snug inside here, so that goes here. So disconnect and then locate this wire. Follow the other orange cable here and the red one. It's not gonna be perfect the first time you make. So yeah, everything is looking about the same length here. So see if you follow one wire, you might be lucky enough to get everything right in the first time. You might end up with something that's completely different to what you planned. <laughs> Here's the last wire. All right, 
everything is coming according to plan everything look looks nice and neat not too long not too short okay so this is perfect for what we need so now because this is a 14 sales in series and we go up to 15 series we need to put the jumper between uh, 13 and 14 here okay so we're just going to use a wire connecting 13 to 14 okay for 14 cells in series i'm just going to cut a small cable here i'm going to cut about Right, so this is the little jump lead that I'm going to be using to short between 13 and 14, okay? So one side is the thicker uh, ferrule here. I'm going to be connecting to the screw terminal hole here, okay? And then this other side here, which is just a bare wire, I'm going to be connecting inside the number 13. You can't really squeeze two ferrule inside the same screw terminal. You can either get a bit larger size ferrule like this okay so like this is a bit wider but it might be a bit too big for this it's actually easier to just do like a little bit of a solder here so i'm just going to pre-tin this thing here now that the jump lead is actually finished put a bit of a solder here to make it a bit stronger i actually remove the connector here oops and then i actually insert from the bottom okay so make it nice and neat okay you go here open as much as you can number 13 and then you go here insert holding position and screw together nice and neat and then the other one you just go like normal one here so now you can see here short between 13 and 14 plug it here right so now that i lower the light so you actually can see the led in the camera so here it's, it's actually asking if this is a 15s so you say no it's not a 15s it's actually a 14s okay so you hold it, the button here and press it says pass but if you mix around and just remove one wire let's just remove this wire here okay remove or swap and then you press the button here fail c8 open which is this guy here it's actually the number eight perfect so what if i mix seven and eight so let's just see what happens so i'm just gonna put this guy here and then i'm gonna go with this guy here and see what happens so this is back to front back to front okay so let's see what happens so when we press the button here you see c8 high c9 negative c10 high all right so this is high this is negative this is high so the reason why you see this is because at this voltage is too high the jump between this and this is actually too high it's actually six volts difference here and you actually should be three volts and then here it sees a negative voltage between these two wires and it says negative and then here it's saying there's a high voltage between this and this there's another six volts here again okay so let's just go again fail ch high C9 negative, C10 high. Right, so I'll be fixing this thing. It says pass, yes. So now we have lots of wires here coming from the battery. So we need to make something to protect uh, this from anything crunching or pinching this thing. Uh, and then yeah all, this is a demonstration pack so the distance between the battery and the battery management system is really short it's just for demonstrations but in real world real installations this thing can be up to like a one meter two meters three meter long cables okay so you need to some mechanical uh protection from pinching here okay so now you have some options all right so people be thinking ah a soft heat shrink Mm, yeah, it is some protection, but it's not really mechanical protection. It's really soft as you see here There are some thicker heat shrink, but not a good idea. It's still soft. So a braid here. Yeah, nice It looks really nice. Okay, he offers some abrasion resistance here, but no crushing nothing mechanical protection here. Okay, you can Ideally you'd be using something like this. Okay, so this is really hard. Okay, this is hard plastic Okay, and it's got a cut here it's even hard to open okay so put my fingers here 
it's actually really really strong so if anything drops or like see look see it's perfect not crushing the wires at all inside the wire is still protected so this is mechanical protection and if you want if you don't like the way this thing looks you can easily run another braid on top okay so to make it look nice okay so in this case we're actually using the very little one here it's more suitable for this we can run the medium size to, for both of them here so i'm just running a little demonstration here so i'm going to be doing just one side here So here you can have a heat shrink here to make it just a nice finishing. And yeah, I'm just going to use a zip tie just for demonstration. Okay, so it just holds the wire all together here. Really, really strong. Okay, you can't you can't crush these wires. Okay, they're really nice, really strong, and safe inside. So you consider using something like that for mechanical protection not pinching your wires that's another suggestion here for safety so now that you check the wiring and you press the button here it says pass so it's time to transfer both connectors to your watch mom okay so you notice that there are two eight pin connectors eight pin eight pin so there's a chance you might uh in a rush connect this connector here and this connector there and everything is going to blow into bits okay low voltage high voltage in the wrong side mm, not a good idea so what i normally do here i normally grab these two wires here and I put a zip tie okay so that's actually <laughs> a really cool trick and helps quite a lot I'm gonna show you here okay so leave a bit of a distance okay so this is just to remind you the position leave a bit of a distance so you can actually disconnect the wires without pulling the cable okay so you go here I'll trim this cool and this stays here and then what I'm gonna go I'm gonna connect the negative first and then the, the positive side of the pack on the other side, secondly. Okay, so time to remove this. So read instructions before using. Make sure you go on a website, read instructions. There's a lot more configuration. This is just the wiring part of the installation. So read instructions before use. Ta-da! Beautiful. I keep it on the side. So I'm going to be removing here. So the ferrules actually helps you. You can actually use this as a helper to remove the connector, okay? So see, you can't mix them. See, it doesn't make sense mixing. Okay, so now you're gonna go here, you're gonna connect the low volts first here. You connect, and now you connect this side here. Okay, be careful not to do anything like this. Connecting wrongly this might damage your BMS as well. Try, especially here, pay attention when you're connecting this one try not to skip and connect anything like that pay attention when you're connecting match careful and connect it properly same here watch what you're doing and do not make any mistakes here and that's it so now you have to actually plug a usb and start configuring this thing uh the software telling how many series you go everything uh, in the software that finishes the balancing wiring fusing to your watch mode 5 which is very very important thanks